Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial series on Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to set up Elasticsearch in cluster mode. We're going to use Logstash to put some data into Elasticsearch, and then we're going to use Kibana to report off of it. For this tutorial series, I've got every single step in the description, and I've got it handy for myself so I can copy paste. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to launch some EC2 servers. We'll choose Amazon Linux AMI, and we'll use a T2 micro um, for this demo. We're going to launch four servers. And even though it's just a demo, I'm going to up the size of the hard drive a little bit because we're putting some data into it, and I'll put it to 25 gigs. We're going to name these servers AWS Tutorial Series, and this is going to be important later as we put these servers into cluster mode. Our security group is going to be wide open, inbound, outbound, and all traffic, but for production, I'd recommend locking it down to ports 9200 and 5601 for Elasticsearch and Kibana. We'll go ahead and click launch, and I've already created an SSH key pair for myself. So I've gone ahead and renamed my servers. Two of them are Elasticsearch, one is Logstash, and one is Kibana. And what's important to note here is that the Elasticsearch servers are going to have a discovery tool built in that's going to discover them and put them in cluster mode. So they need to be named the exact same thing in order to be considered a cluster. So now we're going to want to log in to our Elasticsearch server. And again, I already have all these uh, commands already detailed out and they'll be in the description below. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste them. First thing we want to do is sudo up. We're going to want to make sure we want to run a yum update on all of our boxes just to make sure they're up to date. And then we'll go into the root directory. We're going to get the Elasticsearch RPM to install. And we will install Elasticsearch. And just for cleanup, we're going to go ahead and remove that RPM just so no one else uses it in the future. And now we're going to go into the Elasticsearch directory where we're going to install a few plugins that I'll talk about later on. So the first one is called Elasticsearch Head. We'll install the Elasticsearch Big Desk plugin. And we'll install the AWS Cloud plugin. And this is going to be our discovery tool for all of our EC2 servers to talk to each other. And the last thing we need to do is we need to edit our Elasticsearch YAML file. And this YAML file will uh, help these servers talk to each other over that plugin. And now all you need to do is copy the config that I have provided below um, and just replace the access key and the secret key uh, with your information. So now that everything is configured, the last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start Elasticsearch. We can see that it started OK, and now we can log out of the server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the public IP address of the server of port 9200 and I'll verify that Elasticsearch is installed. And you'll want to do this exact same setup on the other server. And so now what we want to do is we want to create a load balancer to route Robin across the two servers because we don't want to go to the single IP address of a box to check that it's working. We'll want to go and hit the DNS of a load balancer and we'll be able to see all the information we need as a single point of entry. So now we'll go to load balancers and we'll create a load balancer. And we'll want to set it to our VPC. And we're going to want to set the ports to 9200 on both the inbound and the instance ID. And our ping path will just be on slash. We'll select all of our available subnets. And we're just going to use the default security group of wide open. It's going to be inbound, outbound, all traffic. And we already have those two EC2 servers created. So we're going to want to select those. Click continue. And we'll go ahead and create the load balancer. So now that our instances are in service, we can go to the DNS name of this load balancer. And we can see that it's exactly the same as going to the uh, public IP address of the servers, but this way we can round rob it against the two. And it provides a single point of entry into our cluster. So now that that's all set up, we can go and install Logstash. So let's go ahead and log into the Logstash server. And again, we'll just go over the public IP address. 
And I've detailed out the log stash steps as well for you. And so I'll just copy and paste those. So we're going to get the RPM of log stash. And we'll go ahead and install log stash. And just for cleanup, just like on the Elasticsearch servers, we'll go ahead and remove that RPM. So now we'll go ahead and edit the logstash configuration file. And I've provided just a simple config for you um, to take an input from a text file and put it into Elasticsearch. So we'll go ahead and copy this. We we'll want to make sure we put the load balancer uh, host name. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And we'll finish this off here with the protocol. And we should be set for Logstash. So we'll go ahead and save that. And all we need to do is we need to start Logstash. And just to test that we can put some data in there, all I'm going to do is going to echo out a simple string into that text file. And we can see that it'll get put into Elasticsearch. And I'll do this a couple times so we can have some extra data. Okay, so we'll finish putting just a little bit more data in there. Great. So now that we have a lot of data inside of our Elasticsearch server, this is where those plugins I was telling you about are going to come in handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit our load balancer, DNS name, and we're going to go to the head plugin. And the head plugin is pretty cool. So we can see that, yes, we have a log stats entry that we created today. Um, and that it's stored across both of our nodes. But what's super cool about this plugin is that we can look at all of the indices inside of our Elasticsearch cluster. And it's cool because we can go to the browser tab and just at a quick glance, we can take a look at some data that's inside there without having to write any sort of queries into Elasticsearch. So it's really cool and it's really, really useful. And so now what I wanna show you is I wanna show you the Big Desk plugin. So Big Desk is pretty cool. Big Desk gives us the ability to kind of look at our cluster from more of like a technical standpoint and we can see uh, the CPU, the memory, how things are going, making sure the cluster is healthy, and we can even see sort of where the data is being sharded across each of the nodes. So that is, uh, it's definitely a really cool feature. Really like these two plugins and I would recommend installing them. And so now uh, that we have all of that set up, the last thing to do is to set up Kibana and we can start visualizing our data. So we'll go ahead and log in to our Kibana server. This is probably the more simple of the setups. Um, Kibana 4 is just uh, running on Node.js, so it's really, really simple to set up. And so I'll go ahead and do that for you now. So let's go ahead to our root directory We'll go ahead and get the Kibana tarball. And we'll extract Kibana. And just like the others, we'll remove the tarball just for cleanup. And now the only thing that we're gonna need to configure in here is just the Elasticsearch server that we're pointing to. And so remember, we have that load balancer, so that's where we're gonna wanna point to. We're gonna wanna point to that single point of entry into our cluster. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll go ahead and copy this just because it's a long IP address. Go ahead and click save. And now we're just going to, we're gonna no hop starting Kibana just so we can leave it running in the background because with Node.js, uh, if you just ran bin Kibana, it would be running fine. But if you hit control C or logged out, you'd be out of the application. And so now if we go to our IP address on port 5601, we can see that Kibana is loading and it's going to let us know that we have an index named Logstash. It's already recognized it. And now we're going to find the uh, timestamp field. So we can see, yes, we have the Logstash uh, entry there and we can go to the timestamp field. We're going to go ahead and click create. And if we go to discover, we should be able to see our data and we do. So that concludes our tutorial on Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. I hope it was very useful.
And please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any extra questions, feel free to reach out to me below. Thank you so much.